These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. You said that you understood it for the cation case, but not the anion case? Yeah. Now, uh, maybe I'm not quite uh, following you there. The anion case is not that much more difficult. Or you weren't sure how to tell whether it was anion or the cation? Well, the convention is that generally the cation is written first and the anion is written second. Um, and also, sometimes you just know from your outside knowledge. For example, um, in this case, um, is this the cation or the anion? Yeah. So that would be the cation? Right. Also, does potassium tend to form anions or cations? Do you know where potassium is in the periodic table? Right. So does it tend to form cations or anions? Sorry? Cations. Right. Because if it's on the left side of the periodic table, does it tend to gain or lose electrons? Lose electrons. Yeah. Things on the left tend to lose electrons so they can kind of go get the noble gas configuration by the back door. Since this is on the left side of the periodic table, we would tend to, exp and it's uh, on the metallic side, it would tend to lose electrons and become a cation. So there's two ways to see this as the cation. We would expect this to be a cation from the periodic table, and it was written first. So this complex over here must be the anion complex. Yeah, but I guess some, sometimes, like, when we're doing it, which is kind of odd, it was, mm -hmm. it was written very oddly that we couldn't... Do you have an example of that? No, I guess we'll just bring our examples next time. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe, uh, let's see what we... Uh, Examples. So we can just go over naming in general. That would be fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like complicated ones. All right. Well. Uh, is this complicated enough? Is this the kind of thing you were thinking about, or is that too easy? Well, as we can just see how this Okay, works. good. So, um, the metal is a cobalt, right? Right. And then, um, so you, first of all, you would say, uh, what is it? Penta nitrogen? Amine, amine sorry. So what do you think is the charge on the cobalt? Plus three. Yeah, let's go plus, through that. Plus three minus one equals two. Right, good. Now what you're doing here is you're practicing what we went over last time, which is assigning oxidation number, right? We had some practice with assigning oxidation number last time. Um, so let's use the notation that I suggested last time. For example, what's going to be the charge on each of these chlorines? Minus one. And how do we know from the periodic table? Since it's in the next to last column, it wants to gain one electron. Remember that in the oxidation number approach, as we talked about last time, we approximate all the bonds as purely ionic. So we're pretending that everything here is an ion. Well, this wants to form a negative one ion, because it's in the next to last column. I mentioned last time that I put the individual numbers down below and the group numbers up above. And what would be the charge on this chlorine? Minus, Minus one. For purposes of oxidation number, it's completely irrelevant whether the, uh, chlorine, whether the species is inside the brackets or outside the brackets. For purposes of assigning the oxidation number, it makes no difference whether the species is inside or outside the brackets, because for this purpose, we're approximating all the bonds as ionic. So it doesn't matter whether they're inside or outside. Sometimes we think about the bonds inside the brackets as covalent, but we don't do that for oxidation number. For oxidation number, everybody is equally ionic. And you guys just remember that these have charges of zero. 
There should be a table in your textbook of the common ligands with charges of zero that you're expected to know. All right, and then um, overall, this whole um, coordination compound has to be neutral. If the whole compound has to be neutral, well, here so far we have a negative three charge. So this has to have a positive three charge. Uh, you guys made it maybe a little more complicated than it had to be. I think what you guys said was, since this is negative two, you said that the complex has to be positive two. And therefore, this has to be positive three, because three minus one is two. But for me, it's easier just to not, uh, just think about the whole, the fact that the whole thing has to be neutral. There's no need to separately think about the complex separately. Plus three minus one minus two is zero. That's the easiest way to see this is plus three. Unless there's a charge outside of the brackets, right? Plus or minus. Well, there is a charge outside of these brackets. This coordination complex is positive two, isn't it? It's, or, or am I getting, yeah, positive two. That um, uh, to balance this negative two, but I think what you're thinking is sometimes you're given the coordination complex without the counter ion. Sometimes you're simply shown what the coordination complex is without being shown the chlorine counter ion. Now, if you're not given the counter ion, then they would give you what the charge is. So you're right, in this case, you would say this has a negative one charge. Um, and then I know this has to be positive three because three minus one is positive two. Why didn't they put a positive two charge here? It is positive two. This does have a positive two charge. You could put the positive two, but they don't need to because you can figure out that it's positive two from the counter ion. Since this is negative two, you can figure out that this has to be positive two. They just didn't write it because you can figure it out. But in this case, because there is no counter ion, they have to tell you the charge because you can't figure it out. So usually when there's no counter ion, they tell you what the charge is because otherwise you couldn't figure it out. Usually when they do show the counter ion, they don't show you the charge on the complex. But that doesn't mean the complex doesn't have a charge. They just didn't have to tell you. Um, in this case, this is still positive two. It's the same complex in both cases. Uh, all right, so yeah, in this case, you would try to make sure that all the numbers add up to positive two. In this case, for me, it's, for me, it's simple as just to make all the numbers add up to zero. Although, again, you could just um, figure out that this has to be positive two, because this is negative two, and then make all these charges add up to positive two. Either of those is correct. Okay. All right, so we decided this was positive three, which is what you thought. That's good. So then what? We have to put in what the oxidation number is on the transition metal. That's why we had to figure out this number, okay? Chloride. Chloride. Good. That was something you had been misstating before, but now you got it right. Earlier, you were, you were trying to figure out what this would be, and you said maybe this is chloro, and maybe it's chlorine, but now we've got it right. It's chloride. The counter ion anion here is chloride. So um, remember the terminology here. This whole thing is called the coordination compound. This whole thing is called the coordination compound. This part is called the complex ion. And this part is called the counter ion. And uh, here, obviously, this is the transi transition metal. And these are ligands. Does it matter where your ligand is? Like, for example, if you have cobalt, um, Cl, and then the amine, does it matter which goes first? Those, those would be the same. Yeah. So there's no significance to what order these are written in. There's no significance to what order the, these parts are written here. I think it would be perfectly fine to put Cl first and then H3 next. So, pardon? The metal is always first. Yeah. The metal is always first. That's right, that is important. In these coordination complexes, um, the metal is always written first. That's right. So what, what I was mentioning here before is there's a different way to name the chlorine when it's a ligand than when it's a counter ion. Um, the ligands generally end in O. Ligands generally end in O. That's why this is called chloro. 
But the counter ion is just named um, with I, which is the normal way to name those. After all, what's the name of this compound? Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Um, well, this is uh, just named like a normal counter ion as chloride. It doesn't get the O because it's not a ligand. It's only the ligands inside the brackets that get the O. Uh, on the other hand, though, there's a couple special names that don't end in O. Like this is amine. It doesn't end in O. Uh, did I write this wrong? Yeah, I think it should be two M's. Penta amine chloro cobalt. Uh, 